rainbow cheap pan cookie cake. Our cake is just the white box cake mix that you find at the grocery store, and you're gonna want two of them. And you just follow the instructions on the back of the box. And I've already sprayed and lined a half sheet tray with parchment paper and nonstick spray just to ensure that the cake doesn't stick. I have eight egg whites already in the bowl, and I'm gonna add just our cake mixes. And then to that, it gets half a cup of oil. To give it that rainbow cookie flavor, I am gonna add three teaspoons of almond extract. And while Kate's doing that, we're gonna make a ganache, which is pretty classic on an Italian cookie. I've got a pint of heavy cream here, just coming to a light simmer. You don't wanna boil it, you don't wanna scald it, you just want to be nice and hot. And I'm gonna add it to 16 ounces of semi-sweet chocolate chips and just start whisking. And it's really important to kind of get this going ahead of time because you want the ganache to have a chance to cool slightly. The ganache is too hot. When you go to drizzle it on the cake, it's gonna just run right off. We're gonna separate our cake batter into three so we can make the three colors for the rainbow cookie cake. Um, so I have Del food coloring here and we're gonna dye each one. We're gonna go for the classic pink, yellow, green version of the rainbow cookie cake. My other favorite part of this no stress cake <laughs> is that we're just gonna pour the batter into the pan in thirds, but it doesn't really matter if they intermingle because we're gonna be able to trim it up later. We have our range set to 350 degrees. This is gonna bake for about 20 minutes. So this is our cake that's come out of the oven and we've let it cool in the pan for about 10 minutes. So to get it out of the pan, I'm gonna invert this cooling rack on top of the cake and then just do a little flip. You look like you've done this before. <laughs> All right. So I'm just gonna grab this parchment back off the cake um, and put it back on my sheet pan so I don't have to clean chocolate off of it later. Nice. And then I'm going to do that same thing one more time to put the cake on a cutting board so we can cut it up to stack it. I'm two for two. Look at that. So I'm going to cut the thirds of the cake and I'm going to take the, the pink layer and put it down on top of our rack. And then in between the layers, we're going to put seedless raspberry jam. And it's really important to use uh, seedless raspberry jam and raspberry jam that is a pretty smooth consistency. You don't want the lumps and you don't want any bits of pulp or any of that stuff in. After we stacked up the layers of the cake, I also went around the sides to trim the cake. Another important thing about the ganache is you want to make a lot more than you think you're going to need. You don't want any bits of cake uncovered with ganache. It kind of defeats the purpose. That's good, you think, right? Yeah, let's do it. Yes. And then you can kind of help this process along with an offset. So once the ganache is poured, I like to let it set for about 10, 15 minutes. It looks like it came from a bakery. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> I mean, good job. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, stunner. 